Benetton versus Leinster, live from Stadio de Manigo. On Off the Ball. With Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. Team of us, everyone in. It's Saturday, it's Off the Ball on News Talk. John Duggan with you from now and every week in 2020 until 5 o'clock. You can text us on 53106 at a cost of 30 cents. You can also get in touch with us on the Off the Ball social channels on Twitter, YouTube and on Facebook. From 3 o'clock, we'll have the football show from Republic of Ireland and Crystal Palace defender Damien Delaney will join me, Daniel McDonnell and Johnny Ward to go through all the Premier League scores and talking points in the early match. It's Watford nil, Tottenham Hotspur nil in the first half at Vicarage Road. Christian Eriksen on the bench for Spurs. In the championship, it's QPR 1, Leeds United 0. Naki Wells with the goal for Rangers in London. But now it's time for live and exclusive commentary of the Heineken Champions Cup Pool 1 match between Benetton, Treviso and Leinster. We can cross to the Stadio Di Monigo in Italy and our commentary team of Johnny Murphy and first Neil Tracy. Good afternoon, guys. Thanks, John, and uh, good afternoon. You're very welcome along to this round six game in the Heineken Champions Cup. Leinster already guaranteed their place in the knockout stages. But despite winning five from five and with four bonus points along the way, they do still need a victory this afternoon to make sure of being at home in the quarterfinals. And that victory as well would also make sure that they would be at home in Dublin for a potential semi-final. 15 wins out of 15 for them so far this season. So in all likelihood, it looks like they probably are going to make it 16 out of 16 and set that new club record, which uh, had been 15 games ever since uh, this season of 2000-2001. Johnny Murphy is alongside me this afternoon. Johnny, obviously, Leinster are guaranteed their place in the quarterfinals, but there is plenty at stake this afternoon, plenty of interest with the Six Nations squad having been announced midweek, and in particular, you look at Max Deegan and Quail and Doris, how Leo Cullen has decided to fit them in into the back row. Yeah, I think, you know, there's... Uh a lot of things uh, up for grabs, especially in particular the uh, Doris and Deegan. Um, but you look look at the likes of um, you know Devin Toner, who's back in the squad after being named during the week, and also uh, I think. But first and foremost, the most important thing for for Leinster is to try and seal that uh, semi final, uh, that home semi final, if they get their win today. Well, Leinster playing from right to left as we watch it in this opening half of the game. And we are underway here at Stadio Manigo as Devin Toner takes the short ball up just outside the 22. Luke McGrath moving the ball in the centre of the pitch out towards the right to Ross Byrne and Ross Byrne's kick goes down in the direction of the halfway line where Ian Keatley takes Keatley jinks back inside as Josh van der Fleer tries to get over him and Tito Tabali now with a short pass outside to his open side flanker Bram Stain. Benetton actually made a late change coming into this game Erne Herbst is going to start in the second row Herbst who scored a try against Leinster in the opening round of this competition he replaces Alessandro Zani, the 117 times capped Italian international, while Alberto Scavri comes onto the bench. So an extra back on the bench for Benetton. And an early penalty for them. James Ryan penalised for not rolling away. And an early chance for Ian Keatley just outside the 22. As the Benetton fans try to make a little bit of early noise one minute into the game. The side still scoreless. As we see the penalty here. James Ryan just went in over the top and a bit of a bit of a silly penalty there from from someone's experience is James or James Ryan he gets back up on his feet after the rook has formed and then goes to chase the ball with his hands probably just needed to try and fire through there give the op- give an opportunity to counter rook so um, yeah I just give uh, Ian Keatley puts the ball into the 22 and they've got a nice attacking position for a line out yeah that penalty was just outside the 10 metre line centre of the pitch but Ian Keatley obviously deciding it might have been just outside his range and he's opted to go down towards touch so it's a line for Benetton 10-15 metres out as Hame Faiva finds his man and Benetton try to get that ball working Faiva who's been lethal at the back of these malls so far in this campaign he scored a try against Leinster he's got four in, the, uh, four in this competition already this season in his five games but they're held up and Simone Ferrari now the tight head prop takes a short ball to be followed by Bram Stain as Benetton start this game very well and edge their way up towards five metres out Faiva now tackled by Devon Toner and Benetton now working from the centre of the pitch out towards the left hand side six seven metres out from the try line and Ian Keatley he finds Marco Zanon but he stopped well with the Leinster defence Toa Halafi he now edges his way up towards two three metres from the line this is a brilliant start from Benetton Faiva sli- uh, loses the ball though and it's gone to ground, but we are going to come up, come back all the way back for a penalty for Treviso. Carl Dixon, our referee today, blows his whistle. And Leinster penalised. They, uh, they got very good uh, uh, 
good go forward there off that line out mall they said it Leinster came in and disrupted obviously illegally but they had a good opportunity they got it going forward good set I wouldn't be surprised if they go to the corner again it's probably an area that they feel they have a, a small bit of a uh, bit of dominance in but first signs yeah and uh, Keith's going to the corner here, but yeah, they 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 have a massive opportunity here now to put put score on uh, score on the board. They really good line out set there, another set like that, and they could could get over. Yeah, the line out has been quite impressive for them so far this season. 62 out of 68 in the line out for them, and 91 percent, and just five meters out now. Faiva finds his man once again, and they tried to set up that mall. Leinster just tried to wheel it out towards the towards the touch line, but. Benetton do well, and it's gone to ground, and Faiva slips it back, and we're going to play away, and Ian Keatley tried a little grubber through, but it was blocked down by Jordan Larmer. As Benetton go backwards, Dave Carney now smothers Jaden Hayward, and Tibali out to Monte Ioane, getting his first touch of the afternoon, and Andrew Porter got in over the ball well, but Monte Ioane managed to get it away. They kind of doubled down there on the line-out mall. They actually had a an eight-man line-out with uh with their 13, uh, their 13 Lucas Morrissey in the in the in the line-out. So there wasn't a whole lot of options for Keatley to go out wide. They were man down in the back line, and they've gone backwards about 10 or 15 meters ever since that line-out. Just inside the 10-meter line now is Toa Halafihi. Gains a couple of couple of inches on the ground. Uh, to Eli Snyman now but that spills to the ground and Leinster have dealt very very well with that Benetton attack big momentum shift there they were uh, under pressure a small bit at a, 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 line, a line out time they had really good mall, mall defence and then they just absolutely swarmed them with with their line speed end up getting a, 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 a knock on here um, well, just it, outside their 10 it looks like I think the first the first knock on might have been from a Leinster hand oh, yeah James, James Ryan. Ryan came in tried to tackle and that's why the ball went to ground so Benetton are going to have the ball and the put into this scrum although Leinster will be targeting this set piece this afternoon Benetton with a, an 87% success rate a reminder as well one other game going on in this pool at the moment Leon against Northampton and it is a game that is definitely more of note for Munster fans than Leinster fans. We will be keeping you up to date on that, of course, and how that is going. Three minutes gone in that game, and it remains scoreless at uh, over in Leon. Munster fans will be will be hoping for a, a Leon win. A Leon win this afternoon would be no matter what. Munster would have a chance of qualifying for the quarterfinals tomorrow afternoon. Although if Northampton and Glasgow were to win this evening then it would mean Munster would be out before they even step onto the pitch at Thoman Park tomorrow, which we'll have live commentary on and off the ball. Be able to see them, Bernard Jackman will be alongside me at Thoman Park. As Benetton retain possession of that scrum and work back towards the left side of the pitch and now in towards the centre, and Angelo Esposito shrugs off tackles from Andrew Porter and Keane Healy very, very well. And Keithley now to Jaden Hayward. And finds second row Eli Snyman at the back. Good sustained bit of pressure here from uh, from Treviso moving the ball around, uh, linking quite well. Good interplay in, in, in their structure. Marco Zanon there. As you can hear the, the wind starting to swirl. It's an overcast day in, in Treviso. Rain expected later on as Toa Halafihi steps inside James Lowe very, very well. And this has been a really, really good start from Benetton. Controlling possession in these opening six, seven minutes. And Tibaldi now, 15 metres out, moves back towards the centre of the pitch. Duck and into the hands of Bram Stain with another carry for the for the Italian international born in South Africa. They're controlling their width very well. They're keeping a, a loose forward out in the wider channels. Uh, we've had Alfia and we've also had Stain carry really well in the, in the wider channels. And they're getting some uh, some dominance in, the, in, in that area. They've, Unfortunate knock on there, just in, just outside the five minute line, but really good to stay in a bit of pressure from Treviso there, holding their width and really trying to uh, push the ball into the wider channels and get those mismatches on the edges, uh, which are forwards running at, uh, which are forwards running, running at back to, in, in those channels. Some really, really good play. Benetton, they've never beaten an Irish side in Europe, 15 defeats out of 15. 
The last time they saw off Leinster at this venue was way back in 2010. Obviously, they've traditionally been whipping boys down the years, but the last couple of years, Kieran Crowley has definitely changed the changed the culture around Benetton and the way they are perceived qualifying this season for the first time on Paris. Yeah, I think that's that's been a massive shift in what they've been trying to do. They're always tough to go out there and, 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 and win, but I think they're now uh, they're picking up those away wins. And as you said, they qualified on merit last year. And really astute right signings, you know, with the likes of Ian Keatley, these guys coming in from uh, environments that are, 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 are top level and adding to it all the time. Um, they're 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 really they're really good side. They're a very difficult team to beat. And they play an attractive brand of rugby as well. Like they do try yeah. to move the ball. We would have had this game back at the RDS in the opening round and while Leinster comfortably beat them, they did try to move the ball around the pitch. They attacked, they turned down shots at goal in favour of going for the post. They offload a lot, averaging seven a game. So they're an enjoyable team to watch now. Yeah, they are. Like the, the, la the fir first nine minutes, or just coming under nine minutes now, is really enjoyable. They've had the, bo the ball for the majority, but as I said already, they're holding their width really nicely and they're moving it through their hands very good. There's been a couple of over the top passes. And yeah, they're very, they play a very attractive brand of rugby, which means the players must have enjoy it. Leinster turn over that line out though, 10 metres inside their own half, Devin Toner getting his hands to the throw from Hame Faiva. As Luke McGrath, 10 metres inside his own half, on the far touchline, 15 metres in from that touchline, prepares to send a box kick down and bring possession really into the Benetton half of the pitch for the first time in these opening 10 minutes. As we hit 9 minutes and 30 on the clock, and Montiwana takes that kick well, but Kean Healy stops him dead in his tracks. Josh van der Feer, very high up on that line, shooting right up with Toa Halabihi. Manages to wriggle and squirm his way over a few yards on the ground. And it's a lovely little chip over the top, and the bounce just goes against Monte Ioane as Andrew Porter picks up. And if Ioane had judged that bounce right, he could have come very close to the opening score of the game, even though he was 40 metres out. But Leinster recovers. It's just the bounce of the ball, the way it goes. Robbie Henshaw now in possession as Gary Ringrose trips back in to the centre of the pitch. Leinster edging the way back up towards the halfway line now. Right in the middle of the pitch. And they go left towards James Lowe. And James Lowe fly, fly hacks up the pitch. And it's one for Jordan Larmer to chase. But Jay, uh, Tito Tavalli's done very well. Just dummies a little kick. And with the outside of his right foot, sends the ball out into touch. And brings possession up around 30, 35 metres out from the Benetton try line. Yeah, well, lucky there. They went after, obviously, a small bit of space. Uh, Leinster leave a tiny bit of space in the backfield just over there. Uh, kind of on the blind side with the way they defend high up in, in that area of the park. Uh, they went after that, but bounce the ball didn't bounce bounce nicely and then Leinster look very dangerous when they and have the ball it's the first kind of sustained period that they've had they might have only held it for maybe 30-35 seconds but they look dangerous there uh, Guy Ring Rose carried quite nicely into the middle of the park and then they went after that space there that kick had probably just been a small bit not as, uh, not as deep into the 22 Jordan Larmer would have had a had a much better chance there but, but, a, but a nice uh, a, a nice which is it's strange that when you're commentating on Leinster games you can say the first sustained period period of pressure they've had is only 30 seconds the, uh, on and it's yeah. it taking okay. 10 minutes for them to get the, their hands on the ball so it's, okay. it's unusual yeah it is it absolutely yeah. is unusual i remember we were saying last week going into the leon game and uh, of the opening four matches they had played the competition before Leon, they'd scored a, a try inside the opening five minutes of the game. They nearly did it last week as well, but they had a try ruled out. Luke McGrath ahead of the kicker. So they have made a habit, Leinster, of just starting blisteringly yeah, and killing off games early. And it has been nice to see a decent contest in these opening yeah. ten minutes. Now, to be fair, what they have done is they've soaked the pressure very well. Uh, Treviso had had one clear opportunity at a try at Mall, and they they managed to they held out there so I think they probably have the viewpoint Whoa! if they hold off the ball here now for, for a sustained period they'll have a chance that's one Sean Cronin finds Quail and Doris at the front of that line out five metres inside the Leinster half and Van der Fleer just lets the ball slip out to Luke McGrath who plays it out to Robbie Henshaw who stopped well by Faiva and Halafihi James Ryan now and he's stopped by a couple of Benetton second rows Doris to Deegan both players lining out together as they did a loss in the second half of last season Max Deegan playing on blindside flank from Quail and Doris at number 8 but, but the turnover is in favour of Benetton a penalty a strong for position them. over the ball always legal just Keane Healy just missed his clean there on the uh, uh, on the uh, inside just on the left inside of, uh, of that rook he managed to spin around and uh, 
Come on. I think it was uh, Marco Barbini Marco, is the one yeah, who got in over got the ball. Got in over the ball, good position, and just Come couldn't on. be just couldn't yeah. be cleared <laughs> out. So this penalty, just right on the halfway line, center of the pitch. The first chance for a couple okay. of players to Head catch time. a breather. Ball's been in play quite a bit. 11, 12 minutes gone now at the Stadio Manigo. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Still Benetton nil, Leinster nil. As we look at this little half chance that they had that little chip going over the top, and in the end it just bounced behind Montiovane, and Andrew Porter did well to recover. Tito Tabaldi with that lovely little dink over the top. Left out of Italy's squad for the Six Nations. And that obviously their first Six Nations campaign without Conor O'Shea now. Franco Smith coming in. He's been going to the main take the reins. Yeah, he's one of the guys that's been kind of around for a long, long time. He had a bit of a period. I think he was in Ospreys for a while. I suppose it's uh, they're obviously a bit of a change in the guard there, and they've made their own decisions to try and shift things around as well. And Benetton Thank trying you. to kick that penalty towards touch, but Ian Keatley's attempt went quite deep, but it was actually kept in play by Leinster, and the whole possession now. Yes, please. Ten meters. 10 metres from their own try line, 6-7 metres in from this near touch line as Luke McGrath sends a right-footed box kick straight out into touch. It doesn't get too much distance on it, really only brings possession just outside the 22. But Benetton, as we've seen, with those couple of penalty attempts, K that one right on the halfway line, might have been on the, the edge of, yeah, of Ian Keatley's uh, range, but how well did James Lowe do to keep that in, just dives up in, into the air. Just shows his athleticism there in terms of when you're no, watching the replay say. here. But right, come he gets, up up really high jumps uh, before he crosses the plane takes the ball into really, really one, good play backwards nine. Treviso end up with the ball probably in the same position anyway <laughs> so <laughs> it's a uh, kind of piece of skill that, that, that doesn't really pay off for Lens unfortunately and again Benetton retained possession off that line out as Marco Zanon makes a hard carry up towards the 22 in the centre of the pitch Kame Faiva now also with a, a short burst as Barbini takes it on another couple of metres and they go towards the left and Ian Keatley into the hands of Jaden Hayward but Hayward is stopped brilliantly by, by Gary Ringrose right on the 22. Snyman now. And Tabaldi goes back into the centre of the pitch to Keatley and Erne Herbst. And a nice offload. And just back and forth Benetton are going. Staying patient in attack. Release that Release! And Andrew Porter told th two, the three the times there to release, the, to release the uh, the ball carrier. And it's going to be a penalty Benetton this time right outside the 22 centre of the pitch. And after kicking a few to touch, I think Ian Keatley is going to yeah, take a shot at gonna, goal now, Johnny. Going to look at take, taking the three here. Uh, I think Lens are, are happy enough to yet? defend. Uh, uh, Treviso are... Um, moving the ball quite nicely within their uh, you know runners off nine and then uh, switching the play uh, playing through and out the back of the shape and getting the ball to wit what they're not doing though is they're not really dominant in the collisions and that just means that they're playing a lot of rugby in the same area of the park so uh, Leinster even though they're not Leinster are bringing their line speed they're not they're not Leinster are probably winning the game line battle at the moment and it just they're just happy enough for Treviso right just waste yourself uh, just just waste the phases here. Uh, interesting enough, they actually went for the corner, so another opportunity for Treviso to try and launch off into a mall. Big, 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 big call there for Ian Keatley. That uh, penalty was right on the 22, straight in front of the post, and they went towards this corner. But looks like Leinster have defended this mall well initially, but are they getting a second shove on uh, Benetton? They do have possession of it with Hame Faiva right at the back. But it's broken up very, very well by Leinster. And Chino Tabali now just decides to break from the back and gets towards... A couple of inches from the try line, James Lowe stops him now. And this is the closest Benetton have got towards the try line. Faiva looks to go to the right. And stopped by a couple of Leinster tacklers as they go again once more. Release again three. towards the right. Leinster scrambling in defence as, as Barbaldi tries to dive over the top. Barbini, I should say, dives over the top, but he stopped. And once more, Devin Toner now tries to get in and stop that. Benetton's not driving. Josh van der Fleer is in over the ball. He's told to release, though, and he has to give that Hands one up. Snyman now stands in over it. And Erne Herbst. Still a yard or so out. 10, 15 metres in from this touchline. Benetton do have a penalty advantage coming. 
So they can take a chance if they want. And straight in from the side there is Matt is Phelan Doris to get his hands the on the ball. Side, okay. We already had a there, penalty advantage coming. So incredible defence there, close uh, uh, in, term, in, uh, in and around the rook at pillar nine, really push him forward and manage it to keep uh, keep Treviso out. Very serious uh, uh, aggressive defence in and around that rook area. They just jumped the gun there at a vital time, which gives away uh, gives away another penalty. Uh, they need to be they need to be careful here in terms of the amount of penalties that they've given already. And I think uh, referee has just uh, brought Luke McGraw over to bring. Everyone Back in to, to, to have a conversation offside. just to be clear if there's another penalty in this area of the park I wouldn't be surprised Let's to see go. someone go yeah Carl Dixon Let's has go. given Luke McGrath a warning there reminding him that Time's five penalties on. now inside this opening 17 minutes and he said you know exactly what's going to happen with the next one he didn't even have to use the word yellow cards Keane Healy was the man penalised <laughs> on that occasion just stepping up off the try line in anticipation of one of the Benetton breaks and once more They've gone into this corner of the pitch, oh, no, this no, near no. corner. Oh. Five minutes out. Okay, time back on. 17 and a half minutes played, still scoreless, and it's been oh, pretty much 15. all minutes on in this opening in quarter of an hour so far. In the air. And another penalty coming, piece, and it's please. surely going to be a yellow card this time as as Bram Stain was taken in Touch. the air, and Ian Keatley has decided he's going to go for broke and just send a cross <laughs> kick over into the far corner, but it was taken by Dave Carney. We are going to come back from this. down in the air, though. We are going to come back from this penalty. I think you can hear there through the through the ref mic we're hooked eight. up today. Seven pulling out, yeah, and as there's expected. Quaylen Doris He's in the going for ten minutes in the bin, taking Bram Stain out. Trying, just tr he was trying to sack him and just, yeah, just got his hands on him before yeah, he just come to ground. Just got in there too early. And then, uh, but they're now, the line out, you know, it's probably, the line out. they have to line manage out 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes without him now. Okay. Um, and with how potent um, what would you like? Treviso's okay. mall can be, you'd imagine that they line stick out. into the corner and try and no, no, listen, fold them captain. over again. Scrum call. Right. Well, this has been really, really good stuff from Benetton these go, opening go. 18 and a half minutes. Obviously, we mentioned before the game that Benetton hadn't beaten Leinster at this venue in, in <laughs> almost 10 years. And, how three times in a row in Europe they've played and it's been three Leinster wins but in recent years while they haven't actually beaten Leinster in a couple of Let's seasons go, Les, please. They've, they've certainly Let's shown no fear when they've played okay. Leinster they got their draw last so season in the, the Pro line? 14 you can say and I remember at the, the launch day for this tournament speaking to uh, speaking to Marco Bortolami who's on their coaching team and he was saying that you know they've just through these couple of performances against Leinster down the years it's one team that yeah. even though they're losing you know every now and again they don't have a fear of them necessarily Crow! I think, and you can see that in the first 90 minutes of play, uh, what they're doing. They just need to, if they can get a couple of more dominant collisions uh, in terms of when, when they're attacking, they just probably that will massively help. And they've gone for the scrum here, five five meters out, 15 in from the touchline, and Luke McGrath as well to stop Toa Halafihi, who broke from the edge towards the left. Staying now with another short burst, bringing the ball back into the centre of the pitch. Get back. Thank you. Thank you, Five. James Ryan just jumps up a little bit too early, but Carl Dixon gives him the benefit of the doubt and tells him just to go backwards. Tibaldi now, as they work their way towards the left. Still five metres from this line. Oh, that's a fantastic shot there by Gary Ringrose. On uh, Luca Morisi, who has tried to get towards the try line. And Sean Cronin gets in over the ball. And Brilliant defence from Leinster, and that's the turnover. There's Sean no Cronin getting his hands in over the on Luca Marisi. And a penalty for Leinster, for five metres out. And finally, a chance for them to clear their lines. A brilliant defensive set. Brilliant defensive set there. You know, they, they managed to soak them for, the five, for two or three times. And then Gary Ringos gets a bit of line speed, You're chops the them down, the and gives uh, uh, Sean Cronin the opportunity to get over the ball. Fantastic defensive set. And you can hear, for all the listeners home, you can hear from the ref, Mike, what that means in terms of the energy that that's just given the Lencer players. They were all in around show, uh, Sean Cronin. Everyone, even James yeah. Lowe, came in from the far, wi uh, from the far wing. From, you do the from same the left. Them, you do exactly uh, the just same, gives so. them a massive energy boost um, and more than they, they, they're way. hoping that they can they can launch into a, a, uh, a good attacking set yeah. here now 20 and a half minutes played yeah. at the Sadio Manigo still scoreless between Benetton and Leinster upcoming uh, coming up towards the 20 minute mark as well at the Stade de Garland where Leon and Northampton Hold. still scoreless as well Welcome. so Munster fans who are listening in this afternoon still scoreless between Leon and Northampton 
Munster fans will be looking out for hopefully a Leon win, which would He's always improve their in. chances tomorrow You're afternoon. Out. Although those chances are slim. As Luke McGrath makes a lovely little break here and brings possession up towards the halfway line. He doesn't have the numbers with him though, and he's stopped by Jaden Hayward, but he does well to just steal an extra couple of yards. No, 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 it's not out. No. While he waits for the Leinster cover to arrive, Ross Byrne in at scrum half, and Devin Toner does well to pick up off the ground and offload to Keen Healy. But he's tackled by Halafihi as Luke McGrath finally gets back around and puts it into the hands of James Ryan, who retains possession. McGrath sends it back towards Robbie Henshaw in the centre of the pitch around 15 metres inside this Benetton half now. We've only really seen Leinster up in this half of the pitch once so far in the game. And it was a short lived spell as Jordan Larmer gets tackled. And now James Ryan with another carry. Ross Burnett towards Robbie Henshaw, centre of the pitch. Tackled low by Marco Zanon. And Luke McGrath with another lovely little break. He's been very dangerous in these last few minutes on the edge of rocks, but has a Benetton on hand, just got in over the top there and disrupted things. No, it hasn't. Devin Toner plays it to James Wright. Tackle now, release! Really get in towards the 22. And Luke McGrath sends it out towards the right into the hands of Ring Rose, who's tackled by Tabaldi. Again, they go right. Healy with Sean Cronin outside him. And Cronin is in to support him and gets over him, and McGrath finds Ryan. And Dave Harney in. As is Andrew Porter and Keane Healy with another carry, but that's a brilliant stop and sent back a couple of yards towards the 22. McGrath out, out to the left again. Ross Byrne holds on to it a little bit long, and he finds the gap and goes back towards the blind side and pops it up to Devin Toner. And Toner brings possession up to around 10, 12 metres from the First try line. On the ball. But, Toa, but Hame Faiva has done brilliantly and got in over the top. And he manages to get his hands on the ball and turn it over. But unfortunately okay. for him, the supporting cast okay, first on the floor. may have knocked so it on. Against, but our assistant seven. referee okay, has informed Crowley that the, the first knock-on was from seven. Leinster. Okay, just a quick look. So it looks just like just hands off. we are just going to go off. toward the TMO just I didn't to see, see who has possession of this ball. Some, uh, uh, two great break for Luke, Luke McGrath there. He's uh, off the edge of uh, a mall, which gets him into the 22, and then another one about four phases later. They're just not getting uh, their pillars set quick enough, so uh, and that's allowing uh, McGrath to pick the ball up and snipe in, a, in around there. What happened there towards the end? Uh, Ross Byrne gets a, a gets a gets a half break and offload to Devin Toner. They're just not getting uh, Treviso. They're just not hunting high enough on the inside when the ball goes across them defensively, and that's giving them opportunity. Lencer uh, and it's kind of a, a common theme that uh, Lencer are going after. What they've done is they've they've had a couple of switch plays back into that space to try and uh, try and get after. Thank you, Woody. Take time. So it's actually going to be a, a Benetton penalty in the end. Devin Toner was the man who was penalised. Just ask a little bit better next time, rather than shouting and going to. Just ask a little bit better, okay? Okay. okay. Conditions aren't fantastic here, so where you are. Um, the rain is coming down. Ball is a bit greasy, uh, and it's pretty cold. So um, I think it's uh, both teams are doing really well to hold on to the ball for the amount of time that they, that they are in the conditions that are, that, that are here. With the rain starting to come down Thank now, you. do you think that if he Keatley gets a, a more routine penalty like the one he had there a, a short time ago, he yeah. might have, might just start to tag over a couple of points? Yeah, I think so. I think you just have to adapt now um, and, um, you know, not necessarily try and uh, ping the corners as much. And you probably need when you, They've had... Uh, They've had Come dominance up, white, for white. probably nearly 18, 20 minutes here, so but they don't have anything to pay for it. So they could have gone three, six, nine, but it's still nil nil. So I think there's probably going to be, a, you would imagine, a change in that attitude now. Looking at the penalty count as well, seven penalties against Leinster so far in this opening half. Benetton have just conceded one. A real indication no, of the type of game this has been so far. Right Benetton right very, right very right impressive right and right putting right Leinster right under right under some good pressure. Credit to Leinster, they are defending well. And they are struggling to get their hands on the ball. But they have it at the moment. Luke McGrath preparing to kick. 10 metres inside his own half and sends it up towards the halfway line. One for Dave Carney to chase. And he does well to get his hands on it. And it bounces lovely into the hands of Max Deegan. And does he have the pace to go? No, he doesn't. He gets stopped on the 22 right on that far touchline. And Devin Toner with a lovely little flick between the legs. That was right into the hands of Luke McGrath. But 
It was the following pass that was forward. Devin Toner is going to be absolutely <laughs> disgusted about that, isn't he? Yeah, it was uh, some great, play, really good box kick, uh, fantastic chase in these conditions. Uh, contestable Dave Kearney gets up, uh, compete with Ian Keatley, manages to win those, and then Max Egan picks up win those scraps on the ground. It just doesn't have the pace to get in, but really Fine, nice bit of skill uh, just at the base of the rook with Devin Toner flicking the ball between uh, between his legs and unfortunate forward pass there from um, wrong, Ross Byrne no, no, no. to uh, just into no, no, no. Uh, Andrew Porter. Porter, yeah, just probably a slight bit too flat just in terms of just over around the ball. Um, so, yeah, just the, uh, the Leinster just lacking a tiny bit of that killer instinct that they've shown over the last five rounds at times but I suppose they've been Stand soaking on, up a huge amount of pressure so you have to credit Treviso with that um, but you know okay, they just need you. to bring that killer instinct back a bit more uh, well, like little things like that yeah, yeah, you wouldn't okay, expect that in an open say. field in their multi-phase game Let's go. Yeah, just make sure and all the while they have yeah. just been slowly wearing down the time on that same okay, we're down to three minutes now for Quail and Norris to come back in Let's go then, lads. There have been a couple of Hold scores space, actually please. over in Leon. Five yeah. points apiece now. I was waiting to inform you that Mikey Haywood, the Northampton Hooker, right. had given Easy them the lead. You, but in the last couple of minutes, Felix Lambe, who was one of Leon's better performers last week Gross. against Leon at the ODA, against Leinster at the ODA, he's got in for a try. Five points apiece. Five. It's a 7 5 Leon. That conversion Set. was scored. So Munster fans will be pleased to hear that. Scrum Benetton just outside their own 22. Tavaldi looks towards the blind side but puts it out into the hands of Ian Keatley who sends it straight out and that ball was taken in and we're, it's going to be a line out for Leinster. Just have in these conditions just inside you the 22. Just need to be really accurate with your exits. Um, even though Leinster don't have, haven't had their killer instinct it's really important that you don't give them any, any cheap opportunities to get inside your 22. Three. Okay. This is probably the best attacking platform Leinster have had in the opening half of this game. A line out just inside the Benetton 22. We're over on the far touch line. OK, so this is the last time we have this conversation. If you move forward again, it'll be a free kick against you. Stay where you are, please. Thank you. Carl Dixon just sorting out the, sorting out the house. As Cronin finds Toner and van der Fleer, who shifts it back towards Sean Cronin again now. Leinster tries to get this ball moving. Bram Stain. Don't pull him out, nine! is in there disrupting and Luke McGrath is told to leave him alone and stay in his work the whole way around and he's got his hands in around Two Sean Crown and Hamek Faiva though Seven is always bound he's trying to get out of there okay. and Leicester have done well to get that away and Luke McGrath once more sniping and he gets another five or six yards up towards this five metre line and it's as close as Leinster have been towards the try line, but once again, another Benetton You're penalty. Fine, didn't change. And Tito Tavaldi, the little scrum half, the Italian veteran, has got in over the top oh, of Luke McGrath. And another Benetton turnover. He was straight that's eight through penalties on that side, and seven now. is always legal. Seven, okay. Again, they're just seven not marking changed. just that close area off the mall and rook. Uh, giving him a grand opportunity, but Tavali does excellent, uh, does really, really well there. Gets back, gets in over the ball, and they can't shift him. I imagine he's going to be playing with a bit of an edge and a bit of a point to prove, having been left out of that Italian squad. Okay, thank you. It'll be an interesting Get a card back. Johnny is okay, the enforcement for the new head coach, but obviously the corner, yeah. Ireland, Andy Farrell, Wayne's, or Wales with Wayne Hivach, France. Yeah, Sean Edwards coming in there since the World Cup as well. Yeah, I think uh, I think of all the ones, I think that's yeah, probably the most interesting. Uh, <laughs> that's the most interesting appointment, and see how the French players do manage uh, Sean Edwards in, in terms of what he would he, he would want and and what he he demands from the players. So it'd be interesting to see how how that goes. Keatley kicks deep towards Jordan Larmer, and he sends another one back Always down to Hayward. If it's a back out to Keatley. That stays in touch again. And Ross Byrne now right in the centre of the pitch, 10 metres inside his own half, and he's completely overcooked that, and that's straight out into touch. And you can see the grimace on his face as he runs away. And it's going to be a line-out, Benetton, 10 metres inside the Leinster half. Sloppy play by Ross Byrne. Yeah, again, it, it's just that kind of, you know, Leinster just, they don't have that killer instinct. You know, it's unusual that they use a, a, a kick-kick no battle, please. be it... Uh, you know, through inaccuracy and kicking, or when they decide to uh, go contestable. You know, they're ones that that really lead that area, 
uh, and try and win that battle in the air. But also they'd be very, you know, they'd be very proud of their kick kick game. And uh, but you know, it's uh, they're just lacking that tiny bit of accuracy here for for whatever reason. Leinster back to the full complement now. Quayle and Doris back on the pitch, but oh, Hamid Faiba tries to go towards the tail of that line out, and he put it crooked. Oh. So a bit of a let off for Leinster. They're going to have a scrum 15 meters in from this touch line, 10 meters inside their own half. I think even though it'd be frustrating for Leinster that they haven't really, you know, as I said, executed. But uh, I think in terms of the, the flow of the game and you know how dominant and, and the amount of possession Treviso have had for it still to be nil nil, Leinster would be happy with the knowledge that you know we put a you know a two three minute of of real accurate play together that they probably will score. Treviso are just letting themselves down uh, as well, just just not having and that killer instinct themselves when they get into good areas. Um, so, you know, I, I think Leinster were probably the happiest of everyone because, you know, certainly in the flow of the game, Treviso should be at least 6, 9, 12 points ahead. A penalty here for Leinster off the back of that scrum. That's some very, very good work from Andrew Porter, who was who won it from, uh, from Federico Zani, his opposite number. Or was actually Nicola Qualio substitute Luce said Prafu has come on he was yellow carded in that opening game of the campaign at the RDS but as Johnny mentioned the, uh, the territory in possession so far still stacked in Benetton's favour 64% possession and 72% territory but Leinster now have brought possession up towards the, the edge of this 22 on the near side of the pitch Ross Byrne kicking that penalty as Keane Healy and Sean Cronin walk down towards this touchline consulting Leinster's very slowly walking in just a five six man line out Josh Van Der Feer standing at scrum half as Ryan takes it up at the front Cronin safely has it now at the back as they set up this ball regaining a couple of inches very slowly at the time as it looks like Luke McGrath is prepared to give up on his pack and send this out towards the back line he does and into the hands of Henshaw who shrugs off a couple of challenges and Luke McGrath once again tries to snipe he's found good value out of this in the opening half of the game Cronin stands over as Devin Toner slips in at scrum half the Benetton defence comes up quickly towards the centre of the pitch just outside the 22 Doris and Porter now he finds a little gap and gets his way inside this 22 and McGrath goes towards the right towards Robbie Henshaw again the grand are Sean Cronin tackled by Keatley and Faiva and Keatley just held Cronin up for a couple of seconds slowed possession up James Ryan now tackled by Zanon Leinster over on that far touch line of the pitch and they work back work their way back towards the left Deegan now in possession as McGrath sends it towards Van der Fleer again though the Benetton defence holding firm Leinster not gaining much ground as Ringrose takes it up again. McGrath to Ryan and once more Qualio stops him. Still centre of the pitch but they go towards the left to James Lowe. He's stopped by a combination of a couple of Benetton players. I think it's the first time you've seen James Lowe actually carry the ball into contact. The first ball he got he kicked. Um, just kind of shows you what kind of game, a game it's been in the first 33 minutes. Very unusual that 33 minutes go by and James Lowe has only touched the ball twice and he's kicked once. And it's the first real bit of sustained pressure Leinster have had in the, uh, in the Benetton territory. They've had to slowly work their way into this game. Still scoreless, 33 minutes played at Stadio Manigo. And a penalty for Leinster straight in front of the post. Three. 17 metres out Stop from the, the try line. Quick more. Put your hand in there, feet. And it's Simone Ferrari, the tight end prop, who was penalised. Has the look of a man who got his... Off your feet. Yeah. Got caught with his hand in the cookie jar, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, you see, and that's the difference, you know. Uh, Ross Byrne is taking the ball straight away. Uh, it's now going to be 3-0. Hand over the top, you not know, supporting his ways. You know, 3-0. 3-0 right. after 35 minutes even though they they haven't had any possession and they've probably only been in the Treviso half twice or three times um, so I think Treviso when they go in at halftime might just rue the fact that you know it's not 9-3 nine, 12-3 nine, three, three, uh, be a whole different complexion in the in, uh, in the game but that was the first bit the first uh, genuine um, 
period of pressure that Leinster brought. Uh, and to be fair, uh, Treviso held up for the for the main part. There was no clear opportunities. Uh, yeah, you know, they, you. they stood up. Obviously, their discipline uh, scuppered. They give away three, but um, you know that defensive set was was good. But the complexion of the game now, Leinster would be would be, be very happy given how the the flow has gone over the last 34 35 minutes. Yeah, as we hit exactly 35 minutes on the clock, it is Leinster who now lead by three points to nil. Thank you. Ross Byrne making no mistake with that penalty. As we see, there has been another try over in Leon, And Munster fans prepared to get excited. I know we're still in the first half, but it's Leon 14 points. Northampton 5, Liam Gill, who had sat out last week's game, one of a number of big players that were rested for Leon. They are now 14 points to 5 in front against Northampton. A reminder, if Leon were to win against Northampton this afternoon, no matter what happens this evening between Glasgow and Sale, Munster would have a chance of getting to the quarterfinals going into their game tomorrow. Rain, now. Rain is really starting to come down here now. Uh, conditions are, 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 ver are very difficult. Benetton in possession, 10 metres inside this Leinster half. Ball was out. Centre of the pitch, Tabaldi now. Over the ball. Towards Keatley and they go towards the left and Hayward. An attempter for Dave Carney to try and intercept, but it was caught by Montiuane, and Carney stood back, and in the end, it was a wise decision because he and Gary Ringrose were able to bundle Yuane out into touch. Bye. I think that's a perfect example of, of, of Leinster's defensive structure. Uh, Treviso get the ball back. Uh, they play three or four phases, but they get the ball back on uh, Leinster's 10. They look like they're playing a lot of rugby. It looks, uh, it looks nice. Uh, they carry three or four phases, but they actually get bundled into touch in the exact same place that they got the ball back. So, you know, even though they look like they're playing all the rugby, they're not going anywhere, really. Uh, Leinster, line, really, yeah. you know, their defensive set was, was excellent there, and they get the ball back uh, just on their own 10 metre. Three and a half minutes to go until the break here. Whoa. Cronin finds Ryan Stay. in the line-out. White! Now come. It's Rover on the far side of the pitch in possession and just tries to get that ball working a couple of yards before Luke McGrath takes it and no, thank prepares you. to send a box kick up one for Dave Kearney to chase. And Ioane doesn't even jump, takes it in his stride and takes it well as Tabaldi sends it out now towards Halafihi who carries up inside the Benetton 10 metre line out towards Keatley again who sends a long kick down a bit of spiral on it but it's caught overhead very well by Jordan Larmer who's going to have a bit of a counter attack and brings possession up towards the 10 metre line inside Leinster's half Luke McCrack goes towards the right and Andrew Porter big handoff in the direction of Marco Barbini as James Ryan now takes the ball up centre of the pitch Two and a half minutes to go until the halftime break. Leinster leading by three points to nil. Ross Burns penalty on 35 minutes, the only score we've had so far. Leinster starting to dominate the collisions now, close quarters. Uh, they got a good go, for, go, go forward ball. Um, and that looks a bit easier. Their, their box kick game, Luke has put up two or three really good box kicks. Good contestables for Kearney down that, down that right hand side. Off wide. Step. They take possession again. Luke McGrath sends another little one of those top spin, one of those top spin box kicks down, but it goes in towards the in goal area, and Jaden Hayward is going to tap it down. 22. So I didn't see it. Come. I didn't see it. Okay. Yeah. Good pressure yeah. there. They're just, yeah. you know, they're, they're they're getting the ball back uh, off uh, off a 22, two box kicks in a row there from McGrath. Carney gets up, win, wins the uh, wins the the battle in the air, and then he goes again. Just ball just just bounces in, uh, unlucky for the butt, just to bounce into the dead ball. But they're happy enough. They're getting the ball back. Conditions like this, they're getting the ball back off a 22 dropout. So they have another opportunity to launch an attack. It's been a very different style of game for Leinster than they've been expected to playing over the course of the season, averaging five tries and 36 points per match. 11 bonus points in their 15 games so far. Of the four games that didn't get a bonus point, the one of those was over here in Italy as well, Pro 14 game against Zebra, where they had to settle in the end for a 3-0 win. It's been that kind of rugby so far, just having to get the job done and deal with a bit of pressure. Yeah, and, and, and they've carried in, in, in close quarters a lot. They've, they've predominantly played off nine, um, and uh, but they've just tried to be as accurate uh, as accurate as they can be. They're just not that that killer instinct just hasn't hasn't kicked in yet. 
30 seconds to go until the halftime break. And that pitch is just starting to cut up a little bit as well. A few brown spots emerging through the grass with that rain. 10, still stop. quite heavy. 10 wide! Floodlights 10 wide! On now. That's Stadion Manigo. Okay, he didn't make the tackle. He didn't Jim make the tackle. Bill catches the box kick in the centre of the pitch and Sean Cronin popped it into the hands of Max Deegan. And Max Deegan now can Leinster strike once more just before the halftime break. In between the 10 metre line and the halfway. Devin Toner now shifts it outside to Andrew Porter, but he's driven back well by a couple of Benetton tacklers. Again, it's that area just right beside the, uh, back, the rook that Sean Cronin exploits. Uh, really good pressure from Barbini, sends it out and knocks Sean Cronin into touch on the halfway line. And that is the halftime whistle here at Stadium Manigo. Leinster leading by three points to nil. Ross Burns penalty in 35 minutes. And the only points on the board so far. Johnny, quick thoughts before we hand back to the studio. Yeah, a bit of a messy game in terms of, uh, uh, you know, what they... Uh, the conditions and you know I suppose it's been uh, a majority has been Treviso but they just haven't you know they're probably going to rue the fact that they didn't take those three six nine points that were that, that were there for them uh, early doors in terms of the flow and the context of the game Lens are probably be happy 3-0 but they just need to grind it out from here on in so that's it from the first half from Stadium Manigo Lens are leading Benetton by three points to nil we'll be back in a few minutes but first we're going to hand back to John Duggan in Dublin Thanks very much, Neil and Johnny. Remember our rugby coverage brought to you by Vodafone, team of us, everyone in. Remember, Ulster play Bath at 3.15. A win will guarantee them a quarterfinal spot. Good news for Munster, as Neil was telling you. Leon leading Northampton by 14 points to five in France. It's Watford nil, Tottenham Hotspur nil in the Premier League. We'll get a report on that after the break. Leeds United looking to get back to the top of the championship with a win over QPR, but Leeds trailing 1-0 in the second half. And off the ball Saturday on News Talk with John Duggan running until 5 o'clock today. You can text us on 53106. The football show is coming up after 3 o'clock with myself, Daniel McDonnell and Johnny Ward joined by Damien Delaney as well, the former Republic of Ireland international and Crystal Palace defender. We want your views on Liverpool against Manchester United tomorrow. The two biggest supporter clubs in Ireland. Are you going to Anfield? What's the score going to be? How's the game going to unfold? What are your favourite Liverpool versus Manchester United memories? And have you been on any memorable trips? Tell us your stories in 53106. Back after this. Benetton versus Leinster. Live from Stadio de Manigo. On Off the Ball. With Vodafone. Official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. Team of us. Everyone in. I'm 36. I'm a husband, a father, a manager. I live in the country. I work in the city. Shortly, I have the most important meeting of my life. But first, I think there's time to play. Just me and my Suzuki Fatara. It's amazing handling on and off-road means it's always fun to drive. Honestly. Get down to your local Suzuki showroom today to find out more about the unmissable 201 offers on the Suzuki Fatara and across the entire Suzuki range. For a limited time, claim up to €150 cash back when you purchase selected NEF home appliances. To find out more, go online to powercity.ie or call in store today. I'm 36. I'm a husband, a father, a manager. I live in the country. I work in the city. Shortly, I have the most important meeting of my life. But first... I think there's time to play. Just me and my Suzuki Fatara. It's amazing handling on and off-road means it's always fun to drive. Honestly, get down to your local Suzuki showroom today to find out more about the unmissable 201 offers on the Suzuki Fatara and across the entire Suzuki range. Are you paying a fortune to light your warehouse? You could be saving up to 70% on your bills by switching to energy-efficient LEDs, all at no upfront cost to your business. Visit ecilighting.ie to find out more. At Davy, it's not just business, it's personal. When it's just business, it's standard, expected, off the shelf. It results in the same old tried and tested. Just business doesn't learn, adapt or grow. When it's personal, we care more, learn more, try more. The results are more rewarding. The relationships are stronger and last longer. We are personally committed to delivering world-class financial investment and retirement outcomes for our clients, people just like you. Let's start the conversation. Call us today or search Davy. J&E Davy, trading as Davy, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. We take our responsibilities personally. Tim should be spending his time networking, scaling up his business. Who knows, maybe even opening a second office. But instead, he spends his time switching off every light, heater and electrical device in the building. When he should just talk to Energia about our cash for kilowatt scheme. 
With grants of up to 30% for energy efficiency upgrades, it's the one-stop, hassle-free way for businesses to see their energy bills fall. Go to energia.ie forward slash business to find out more. Energia, the power behind your savings. Terms and conditions apply. Some people strictly follow the steps. And one, two, Others three, follow one, their own two, beat, three. like Uncle Fintan at Saoirse's wedding. I'm 87 and still a mover! Yippee! If you have a step of your own in mind, like a new car or kitchen, Avant Card offers Ireland's lowest rate on loans over 20k if you have a great credit profile. Apply today at avantcard.ie. Lending criteria, T's and C's apply. New applications only. Info correct 9th of December 2019. Source ccpc.ie. Card Direct Trading as Avant Card is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Avant Card. You do you. We do loans. The Sport Ireland Campus Blanchardstown is the home of Irish sport, not just for our athletes, but for you and the community. For families, check out our kids' camps, sport academies and birthday parties. For adults, why not join our newly refurbished gym with a 50-metre swimming pool or book one of our world-class indoor or outdoor facilities, including our athletics track, sports pitches and courts. And for companies, check out our team building days, conference facilities and events. All this and more at sportirelandcampus.ie. Bargain Town's biggest sale ever continues with the lowest prices on beds, furniture and flooring. That's Bargain Town. First in Dublin for beds, furniture and flooring. Here's a great travel recommendation if you're off in your halls, at home or abroad. Four out of five of our customers would recommend VHI multi-trip travel insurance for reliable medical cover and cover for cancellations, lost luggage and lots more. VHI Multitrip includes all the trips you take in a year from just €52 Euro when you have health insurance with medical cover abroad of €65,000 or more. Call Ireland's number one health insurer now on 1890 or visit vhi.ie. When you need us, we're there. €52 Euro is based on one adult under 65. VHI Healthcare DAC, trading as VHI Healthcare, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland and is tied to Collinson Insurance Solutions Europe Limited for multi-trip travel insurance. Are you fed up with diets that only give you short-term results? Do you want to lose weight and keep it off for good? Is it time for a different approach to losing weight? Motivation Weight Management Clinic's scientific approach will help you to change your whole relationship with food so you can lose weight and maintain it for life. See motivation.ie to book your private one-to-one -one consultation. Motivation. It's not just what you eat. It's why. When you sign family members up with Vodafone Red Family, our multi-mobile package, you're guaranteed the convenience of one bill and monthly savings with a third plan free when you're signed up to two or more plans. However, we're afraid you're not guaranteed the jokes in the family group chat will improve. That video calls will start facing the right way. No, 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 no. Turn it around. Or that you'll get immediate replies to just checking in texts. But for guaranteed convenience, savings and flexibility, pop in store to get Vodafone Red Family for your whole family. Well, except the dog. Free plan offer based on adding Red Plus as a third plan. Contract depends on package shows and offer ends February 28th, 2020. See Vodafone.ie for full terms. If you're going to play that playlist, shouldn't you hear it with the best sound possible? And if you're going to be on the go, shouldn't your phone keep up with you? The Seat Ibiza, available with Beats Audio and wireless phone charger. With 0% PCP finance across the entire Ibiza range, guaranteeing the minimum future value of your Ibiza and a €1,000 online discount voucher. Simple. Smart. Seat. Start moving to your local authorised Seat retailer to find your new Ibiza. Finance is made under a higher purchase agreement and subject to lending criteria. Volkswagen Bank GmbH Branch Ireland is authorised by the Federal Financial Supervisory Authority in Germany and regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland for conduct of business rules. Visit seat.ie slash 201 to find out more. Terms and conditions apply. Benetton versus Leinster. Live from Stadio de Manigo. On Off the Ball. With Vodafone. Official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. Team of us. Everyone in. Now, this is Off the Ball Saturday on News Talk with John Duggan, Benetton, Nil, Leinster 3 in our live and exclusive Heineken Champions Cup commentary game. Ross Byrne with a penalty for Leinster. Back to Neil Tracy and Johnny Murphy initially shortly. Good news for Munster. Northampton trailing Leon by 17 points to 5 in France. Also half time there. Now, next Wednesday, January 22nd, Off the Ball's American football show, The Snap, will be on the road in association with the Erlingus College Football Classic. Mark Carlson and Mossy Quinn will be joining Jerry Gilroy, Ronan Mullen, Kean Fahey and some more special guests as we've been 
build up to one of the biggest events in the sporting calendar, Super Bowl 54. They'll be live from the NFL room at the Woolshed in Dublin for a live preview of the finale of the NFL season. You can get your tickets now at offtheball.com forward slash events. Remember the show is for over 18s only. It's all in association with the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. That's Navy v Notre Dame at the Aviva Stadium on August 29th. Check out collegefootballireland.com for game tickets and more. What's happening at Vicarage Road in the Premier League? Watford versus Spurs, Nigel Bidmeet. Watford nil, Tottenham nil. We've just had a dust up between the players and VAR has checked for violent conduct. The result is no red cards, but yellow for Harry Winks of Tottenham and Abdullah Ducore of Watford. Watford made a really good start to the second half, created two excellent chances. Saar's cross, Dini's flick, Ducore couldn't finish, and then Dini set up Saar and he miscued. Watford nil, Tottenham nil. Now to the three o'clock matches. Second place Manchester City can reduce Liverpool's Premier League lead to 11 points if they beat Crystal Palace at the Etihad. Looking ahead, Darren Stanage. Crystal Palace were the only away side to win here last season in the league, such was the dominance of the champions. But as their title slips away, City will continue to hunt down Liverpool and go in search of more points today. Palace, though, are only three points off the top six. They've lost just one in nine. They're going to come here organised with the belief they can cause their host problems. City, they've not won four league games on the bounce so far this season. They're going to look to put that right today. At the Etihad Stadium, Manchester City against Palace. Sheffield United can go fifth if they beat Arsenal at the Emirates. There for us, Andrew Cheel. There can be no question Arsenal will miss the suspended star striker Obama Yang. A big loss when you're taking on the meanest away defence in the top flight. United's record on the road is impressive. Just two defeats in five. Arsenal three defeats already at home this season. So will the Gunners shoot from the hip or will the Blades be blunted? It's Arsenal against Sheffield United at the Emirates Stadium. David Moyes faces his old club as West Ham. Welcome Everton to the London Stadium. Joe Rawson sets the scene. For a time last month, David Moyes, who is in his second spell as West Ham United boss, might have actually returned to Everton. There wasn't much enthusiasm from either set of supporters about him coming back, but he's improved results here at the London Stadium. Now, that hasn't stopped fans protesting against the club's owners ahead of kickoff today. Everton ended up luring Carlo Ancelotti, and it's been a mixed bag of results since the Italians landing at Goodison Park. In fact, at a meeting of shareholders this week, he underlined the need for patience if they are to reach their big future ambitions together but both could do with a good performance and the points this afternoon it's West Ham United versus Everton at the London Stadium Aston Villa mired in the bottom three with a preview of their match at Brighton Richard Newman it's not roll out that six-pointer cliche, but a game between Brighton and Hove Albion and Aston Villa with over half the Premier League season gone is a big fixture for the two clubs, no matter what anyone says. The hosts, Albion, are in a better position, three points above the final relegation spot, occupied by, you guessed it, Villa. The visitors have lost key players to season-ending injuries. The hosts struggle to take their chances despite some easy-on-the-eye build-up. These are two sides with more potential than they're showing, but fighting for survival. And by watching Brighton's Aaron Moy and Villa, as Jack Grealish will be observing two of the lower half's best creative midfielders, but who will have the upper hand this afternoon? It's Brighton and Hove Albion against Aston Villa at the Amex. Southampton have got their act together. They play seventh placed Wolves at St Mary's. Alan Lewis is there. It's not that long ago that people were calling for the head of Ralph Hasenhutl, but Southampton have reaped the rewards of standing by their manager. Five wins in their last six, including last weekend's excellent victory at Leicester. 9 0 seems a long time ago now. Today they face a Wolves side who continue to impress just five league defeats all season. A rare team that hasn't allowed a Europa League campaign to affect their league form. An intriguing game at St Mary's. It's Southampton against Wolverhampton Wanderers. And as the meeting of the bottom two is Norwich host Bournemouth at Carr Road. Our reporter there, Mike Lawrence. It's looking increasingly bleak for these two sides who occupy the bottom two places in the Premier League table. Look at the stats. Norwich have just 14 points from their 22 games and are six points behind today's opponents. Norwich have won just once in 17 league games. Bournemouth just won in their last six. Norwich have let in a league high 45 goals this term, while no side has scored fewer than Bournemouth's 20. Even Norwich manager Daniel Farquhar has admitted this game is a six-pointer as his counterpart at Bournemouth, Eddie Howe, is coming under a bit of pressure for the first time in his long reign on the south coast. It's Norwich v Bournemouth at Carrow Road. And the 5.30 kick-off between Newcastle United and fourth place Chelsea at St James's Park. Still goalless between Watford and Spurs into the second half at Vicarage Road. Nigel Pearson doing very well at Watford. Spurs just can't seem to get it going under Jose Mourinho so far. QPR 1, Leeds 0. That is in the championship. Leeds have the chance to go back to the top of the table. 
as Troy Deeney looks like he's been awarded a penalty there so we'll keep you updated on that uh, Celtic away to Partick Thistle in the fourth round of the Scottish Cup from half five the football show can win up at three Damien Delaney Daniel McDonnell and Johnny Ward on the panel want your views on Liverpool against Manchester United the two biggest supporter clubs in Ireland 53106 for your texts are you going to Anfield tomorrow what's the score going to be what are your favourite Liverpool against Manchester United memories and have you been on any memorable trips of course Gaelic games as well we have the club finals tomorrow we've got Curra Finn against Kilku we have Ballyhell Shamrocks as well versus Baris Alley. and for the sixth year in a row Ross Common and Galway they meet in this afternoon's Connacht Senior Football League final the Rossies have won the competition for the last two seasons a two o'clock throw in at the high to Midlands Derby in Tullamore in the Board Nimona uh, O'Byrne Cup final Offaly hosting Longford where there's a quarter to three start and Armagh welcoming their neighbours to roam to the athletic grounds for a half seven throw in at the Dr McKenna Cup decider Mickey Hart's Tyrone aiming to win the competition for a 17th occasion Leinster champions Wexford facing Shane O'Neill's Galway in Hurling's Walsh Cup final in Port Leash at four o'clock Corks Father O'Neill's there without the splendid duo Mark O'Keefe and Billy Dunn for their AIB All-Ireland Club Intermediate Hurling decider against Kilkenny's Tullerone thrown at Croke Park is at six Troy Deeney's missed a penalty for Watford still goalless against Spurs back now though to Italy for the Stadio Manigo that's where they're hosting the second half of Benetton versus Leinster Leinster leading 3-0 our commentary team Johnny Murphy and first Neil Tracy Thank you John well the second half just underway and uh, Leinster kicking us into the uh, start of the second half yes. sending the ball just outside the 22 Leinster playing from left to right in this second half on this near side of the pitch Tito Tavaldi sends a box kick up and it's taken by Jordan Larmer just inside the Benetton half of the pitch Luke McGrath now sends it out towards the left to James Ryan as the ground is getting soft and muddy after all that first half rain we had in the opening half of the game Luke McGrath once again trying to break towards the left and it's a tactic that's come to fruition quite a few times in the first half of the game it's been the the platform really for almost all of the Leinster attacks having had to spend so much of the game defending their own line they did finish the half the much better team before taking the lead on 35 minutes with that Ross Byrne penalty and that's a penalty for Leinster and that's Erne Herbst who's going to go straight into the sin bin for that only the second penalty that Leinster have conceded in this game but it was uh, a pretty cynical ploy from Ernie Herbs. Just uh, very slow, very lazy to get up off yeah, the back of that Yeah, slow and, just... and very deliberate. Uh, trying to just get into a lazy run into that passing channel. It's one of the things the referees have been, have been told to really monitor because they're, they're viewing it as, as very cynical play. Um, but again, Luke, Luke McGrath making uh, some nice yards up there. James Ryan uh, carried a phenomenal amount of ball in the first half. Started off where he, I think he carried twice there in, in that phase. And... Um, yeah, but again, Lens are just dom- they're, they're dominating the collisions, which is allowing them just go into that uh, just go into that multi-phase game. So uh, as long as they bring that killer instinct that was just missing in the first half, uh, I think they've gone to the corner here now, so they have an opportunity to launch in and launch off them all. And Benetton, of course, they're going to be without one of their key line-out operators in Erna Herbst, who's just gone off to the sin bin. Seven, in the, in the eight line meters out, out and all. It's, not a straight throw from Sean Cronin and spilled back into the hands of Ian Keatley who clears the ball and sends it out towards outside the 22 it's let great, off for Benetton great clearance there by Ian Keatley good turnover they obviously had a, 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 a either a, a maul or, or a line out move plan uh, Robbie Henshaw had picked up and gone into the uh, back of the line out uh, but they managed to get up turn, turn the ball over and a brilliant uh, clearance kick by Ian Keatley there yeah, and it sends okay, it up towards no, no, the 10-meter line, no, no, and that line no, no, was a no, bit no, of a no, mess no. altogether. You're closing the gap, and they're going early, so we're going to go again. I need you to stay where you Lester are. Let's jumping early, and up, okay? just a lack of communication with Sean Cronin. But as you might Thank have heard, you. Carl Dixon speaking to uh, to the Benetton players there. They were closing the gap before Leinster went early, so we're just going to replay this. Second half also underway over in France, and a reminder now: Leon 17 points to five in front against the Northampton Saints tries for Felix Lambe and Liam Gill Jonathan Wisniewski kicking two penalty, two conversions and a penalty so as things stand Munster will have something to play for tomorrow but they won't know until tomorrow evening whether or not they have a chance of getting to the quarterfinals the other key games for them this weekend to watch will be Glasgow and Sale this evening Saracens and Racing which is also going to be at the same time tomorrow one o'clock and then Toulouse against Gloucester tomorrow late afternoon. 
as Ross Byrne sends a lovely kick down cross field and just bounces just before it goes into touch. Monte Ioane on the wing for Benetton thought he was thought he was going to leave it. Yeah, nice. And it just of, dropped to ground and skidded out into touch. Nice bit of subtlety there at the base of the ruck by Luke McGrath. Manipulates their backfield. It looks like he's going to box kick. And then just as he's addressing the ball, plays back to uh, Ross Byrne, which has forced the Treviso back uh, backfield to to, uh, to switch around to where McGrath looks like McGrath's going to kick and leaves a nice space wide or just in front of us here, uh, down on the right hand side of the uh, bottom right hand side of the, uh, of the pitch. Really, really good play. Yeah, line up for Benetton just outside their own 22. Faiva goes up towards the front and finds Snyman. And they try to set up a mall, but Devin Toner is making himself a nuisance there as Tabaldi sends the box kick up and one for Ioana to chase. And Ioana manages to bat it back and collect it himself. He was all over and now he's drifting back in field, still in possession of the ball, not really going forward, but just drifting across into the centre of the pitch as Tabaldi sends a topspin box kick down and the bounce just evades Jordan Larmer but it lands into the hands of J James Lowe and Leinster retain possession inside their own half on the far touch line just outside their own 22 now with Quaylen Doris carrying and scrambling for half a yard on the ground Barbini getting his hands over the ball another player along with Tabaldi who's not in the Italy Six Nations yes, squad named by Franco Smith who's sitting up in the stands watching some of his soon-to-be players when the Six Nations gets underway in a couple of weeks' time. And it's Tabaldi who collects Luke McGrath's box kick right on the halfway line here. 20 metres in from that far touch line. And Tabaldi now looks like he's going to kick again. He does and sends it down towards the 22 where Gary Ringrose is watching it and Ringrose comfortably or Luke McGrath sorry comfortably takes it Ke where Keen Healy is going to stand in temporarily at scrum half and tried a little grubber kick through but it was just straight off the legs of Benetton player and Leinster lucky to retain possession on that occasion but they spill it now they do lose it it's Andrew Porter who knocks it on and the scream from Toa Halafi he can be heard from all the way up here yeah you can just hear the energy you know that the energy that gives the um, kind of that last kind of 60 to 90 seconds from Leinster it was a small bit laboured uh, you know it came from a box kick uh, that, that that they let bounce uh, James Lowe was under pressure did well to hold on to it and then just from there their, their, their attack has just been a small bit laboured um, and uh, yeah they, they're paying the price to give Treviso an opportunity to, to attack just outside the 22 Andrew Porter just taking his eyes off the ball for a couple of seconds for a half second really as the pass from Luke okay. McGrath came to him and Sign off. in Sign the end he knocked it on you good? Okay, let's go. Benetton Sign have off. survived the first five minutes of this sin bin for Erna Herbst and they have possession now and they're going to have to send I think Bram Stain maybe into the second row temporarily Crouch! Benetton scrum here just Find. outside the Leinster 22. Set. 15 metres in from the far touch line as Tabaldi feeds. And it goes to ground straight in front of Carl Dixon. But he's decided the ball was there to be played. We're going to play away. Esposito stopped by James Lowell. Tabaldi now out to Stain. He's pinned him in there. And Benetton just going through a couple of short phases. Marco Zanon tackled by Andrew Porter. Tabaldi, a short one towards Faiva. And Luke McGrath thought he had his hands over it, but Faiva did well to get the ball out and present it to Tabaldi. Zanon now stopped brilliantly by a couple of Leinster players. And they've gone backwards a few yards. Leinster defending quite well, winning these collisions as Robbie Henshaw swallows Tabaldi up and James Ryan comes in and so does Van der Fleer and so does Quaylen Doris and Leinster turn over the ball but the, box, but the box kick is blocked down okay thank you and Leinster lucky to to come away with it back to Ross Byrne just outside the 22 and he's going to send a, a low kick cross field and it's Luca Marisi who takes it and he's done well to stay in field under a lot of pressure from James Lowe but a couple of Leinster players drive over and Devin Toner comes in and picks it up brilliantly and Leinster have stolen this ball 
inside the Benetton half of the pitch and they look to go back towards the right hand side kick right over across this side of the pitch and Jaden Hayward has to be careful because Dave Carney is lurking over that and Hayward does very well kick with the outside of the stay, foot stay, stay, stay. stays okay. in play and Hayward has gone down injured clutching his ankle as Dave Carney blocked to try and uh, dived in to try and block that kick he just collided with the ankle I think of Jaden Hayward and Hayward is in a lot of pain there now on the ground Leinster in possession centre of the pitch on this 10 metre line Gary Ringrose sending a kick down in towards the corner but it looks like he's put a little bit too much on that and not wide enough either it's going to stay on the pitch but it's going to be a Benetton 22 just shows you the importance of a really good kicking game there a couple of opportunities uh, uh, for Leinster they get re- uh, their defence has been inc- uh, was really good that, that set was uh, really good from the, the uh, Treviso scrum outside the 22 after about 8 or 9 10 phases they've Managed to get them back, get a uh, choke tackle opportunity. Van der Fleer gets the ball, uh, and then it goes to Byrne. Kicks in really good left uh, over over his left shoulder kick. Fantastic chase by James Lowe. Counter rook. Uh, Sean Crone is there. Counter rook, and then off that they go back right as well. Um, really, really good use of uh, their kicking game and attacking the space in behind Treviso. That's taken by. Benetton who have possession now just outside the 22 Bram Stain Shaw Carey Halafihi has found a little gap and shucks the offload back in the direction of Simone Ferrari but Sean Cronin does well to dive in and it's a knock on from Benetton and Cronin has it and Leinster in possession now and another kick from Ross Byrne but that's blocked down no advantage coming we're going to come back for that knock on knock on here just inside with the Benetton half of the pitch it's going to be a Leinster put in over in France Northampton back in the game against Lyon a try for Timana Harrison, Not their gone. number eight. And the scoreline is now 17 points to 12 in favour of Leon. Dan Bigger adding the conversion. Okay. 32 15. minutes to play in that game. 15. We're approaching the, the 50 minute mark here. Against. Benetton make a change, and on comes Antonio Rizzi. Oh, in place of so Jaden Hayward, who, no, no, whose afternoon it seems is over with that ankle injury. Smart play there again. They realise Hayward's off the park, and they realise there's um, uh, space in the backfield. Just unfortunately, Ross Byrne can't can't execute. Just get blocked down. There was a huge amount of space in behind there, which would have uh, if they managed to get they hit grass there. All the Leinster players would have been running forward onto the ball. Unlucky, just just a slight, uh, just, just poor execution there at the moment. Erna Herbs, the Benetton second row, is primed and ready to come back onto the pitch as well. Still has two more minutes to go though until he's able to come back on. After a little stoppage for that scrum, Jaden Hayward, even after coming off the pitch in place of Antonio Rizzi, still just lying down just off the sideline. Still in a huge amount of pain. He's been one of their better performers in this campaign. Their best attacking weapon, leading the team in meters, clean breaks, and defenders beaten. Crouch! Looks a last hit off injury. Kind of happened as he was kicking the ball out. Uh, I think Jordan Larmer um, or uh, Gary Ringrose yeah, came in to try and uh, block it. Nothing in it, but, uh, like no malice in it whatsoever. Just an unlucky collision, just at a wrong time for when he's standing on his on his kicking leg. And that is one that's probably going to be of uh, note for Franco Smith as well. Watching Jaden Hayward with 23 Italian caps. And that scrum is just going to be reset. And all the while, just wearing down another few seconds on that sin bin for Erna Herbst. Okay. So balance. Three balance points to nil past the 50 minute mark here. You're listening to live commentary of Benetton against Leinster at Stadio Manigo. Johnny Murphy alongside me, Neil Tracy. We'll also have more commentary tomorrow afternoon from the Heineken Champions Cup for Munster will look to pull off one of their greatest escapes, I would say. They host the Ospreys, needing to win with a bonus point and other results to go their way. That game is a one o'clock kickoff at Coleman Park. Penalty Leinster here off the back of that scrum. Eight, eight. And Halafihi and Van der Fleer squaring up to each other. Nothing much in this though, just a few little bits of handbags, but the net result is going to be a Leinster penalty 40 metres out from goal. It was, it was Keen Healy who got the shove up on Simone Ferrari. And that's going to be Ferrari's last action of the game because Sheriff Traore, the Italian international, is also preparing to come on to the pitch in the next moment. 
we're just starting to get a bit of spice into the game. I think they're just making uh, that extra number pay uh, pay there at scrum time. Uh, and the, the front row couldn't hold the, pre the, okay. the pressure there and collapsed just when they went for that second shove. Uh, I'd say now Lencer just try and keep the... See what it'd be interesting to see what happens here. Will they keep the try and keep the scoreboard ticking over, uh, or will they go to thing at this stage with the conditions and the the pitch cutting up a bit? There, you see after the where the scrum is placed, they'll probably just try and get out of here with a win now at this stage. So Ross Brown's going for sticks. Uh, try and put six points between the sides. Okay, thank you. The rain's still continuing to fall here, not as heavy as it was in the opening half. As Ross Byrne prepares to add his second penalty of the day. His younger brother, Harry, coming on to hand him the tee. And with 52 minutes played, a chance for Leinster to get their second score of the game. 40 metres out. And just to the right of the post. Relatively straight, though. And Ross Byrne has kicked that one yep. low. Low but straight and straight over the post. And it's 6-0 to Leinster with 52 minutes played here at Stadium Manigo. OK, just send on. Not the most glamorous, but, uh, you know, just keep the scoreboard ticking over at this stage. Um, just with everything that, you know, conditions, everything, just make sure. Three, six, nine, twelve. Game, game will be done. And a couple of changes now for Benetton. Hame Faiva. And it looks like Toa Halafihi might be coming off. And we do have Sheriff Traore on in, in place of Simone Ferrari as well. All done. Okay, let's go. Stand back and Halafihi is going to stay on. It's actually going to be Marco Barbini who comes off. Sean Cronin has also gone as well to be replaced by James Tracy. How did Sean Cronin go this afternoon? Obviously, he was left out of the Irish squad. I would imagine a lot, a lot of that probably down to the fact that he hadn't played much since the World Cup at all. Yeah, I think he did. He did well today. He carried uh, line out for the most part. Was accurate. Uh, he had a couple of really good turnovers. He's won really good counter rook in front of us here off that kick kick battle that they had that that uh, gave Byrne the opportunity to go cross field before Hayward got injured. So yeah, a lively enough performance and what is probably a, a, a day for the front five to be honest with the conditions that are here certainly is and another Leinster change as well in that play two Leinster changes they've got to change the entire front row Ty Furlong also on in place of Andrew Porter as is Peter Dooley just his sixth European appearance he also came off the bench last week in place of Keane Healy ball is out. And made a pretty strong contribution nine okay, tackles in his 30 odd him. minutes on the pitch So a fresh and full front row for Leinster with 53 minutes gone at Stadium Manigo where they lead Benetton by six points to nil. Just need a victory of any kind to wrap up first place in the pool or to wrap up a home quarter final. As well as a home semi-final potentially. They would be the number one seed with a win of any kind. They don't necessarily need the bonus points. They'll have a long way to go if they were to get one. Just one team have ever actually made it to 29 points in this competition. Be Ritz back in 2006-2007. Brilliant, uh, brilliant defensive set there again. Uh, picking and choosing when to go after the ball. And they picked the perfect time. Doris in over the ball. Really good steal there and gets the penalty. Clear release as the tackler assist in on the ball. When Doris is in that position, he's a very, very hard man to move. But their defensive sets have been brilliant. Um, even when they they do lose the contact and and they soak up some yards, two or three phases later, they manufacture an opportunity to go after the ball and either get a penalty or steal the ball in contact. Very, very good play. It seems week on week we're all changing our mind over who's wearing a number eight shirt for Ireland in the opening game of the Six Nations against Scotland. Obviously, CJ Stander is the man in possession for the last couple of months. It was all about Quail and Doris. Then over the last two, three weeks, Max Deegan has been the the heir apparent. Yeah, I, I, I think it's probably going to be one of the two. I I, I would be unsure of that Deegan and Doris. Deegan, uh, yeah, yeah, in terms of you know who play eight, uh, eight and six, I, I think there is the opportunity to pick to pick both. Um, but I, I personally think it'll it'll be one or the other. And for me, I think Doris is just is just slightly ahead uh, more in terms of. Just probably his physical size is actually Deegan's not uh, not uh, not small, but I think um, Doris just probably gives you that bit more out and out ace 
uh, uh, position. So uh, that would be my opinion. But it, it it would be great to see both of them start. You know, it would be a real sign of a of a new uh, of a new start, new environment. Everyone in the goal creating opportunities for guys that just play well. And God knows then what happens when Jack Conan comes back from injury as well. Yeah, exactly. Let alone with Ireland, but Leinster have possession on the halfway line here as Gary Ringrose puts it out to Jordan Larmer. Take him back, kick ahead. 11. 11, take him back. And he calls it was taken back in. Was there a deflection on the ball as Luke McGrath tackles Monte Oana just three, four metres out from the Benetton try line? And Benetton under huge pressure being driven back over their own try line. And it's going to be a five metre scrum for Leinster. That's a brilliant kick, brilliant I, chase. Again, that all came from their defence. Uh, they had, uh, uh, Treviso had the ball just swarmed around get another opportunity in counter rook pass pass and then they put a really intelligent Six. kick on the uh, on the end i think gary gary ring rose you can uh you just see here in the replay as it come up doris again in uh manages to to, to rip the ball uh, Dooley gets in and then just pass and i think to are probably unlucky in the fact that it, it got touched it just kind of ricocheted the kick through got ricocheted so they couldn't go straight out they had to carry just look at the amount of um, the on. amount of oh, Leinster numbers that got there under their post. Incredible drives them back over. Really, really good opportunity here now. Scrum middle of the park, five meters out. Probably the toughest place uh, to defend uh, in uh, uh, in the game. Monte Oane walking back into position, out of breath. He's Max Deegan's afternoon is over. He's come off. Leinster making a change, bringing Reese Ruddock back in. Ruddock obviously left out of the Irish squad as well. Having, I think for most people's Crouch. money, Johnny, we might get to it in a couple of seconds after the scrum, but playing very, very well over the last six months. Yeah, I, I'm certainly a leader within that Leinster group. So they're, they're also leading a, they're also using a, losing a leader there uh, in terms of, of the overall, uh, overall environment. But uh, yeah, that that for me was one of yeah, was probably one of the biggest surprises not seeing his name in, 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 in the squad he had started all the previous games in this competition off the bench this afternoon in place of Max Deegan who took his number six jersey as this scrum is reset you aren't missing anything at the moment Leinster five metres out from the Benetton try line no tries yet in this game but Leinster leading by six points to nil courtesy of two Ross Byrne penalties Benetton owned most of the possession and territory for the first 30 odd minutes of this game but as we've hit the hour mark Leinster really have started to dominate with the ball in hand and where it has been Advantage. And with this scrum, the advantage coming, and they're marching slowly towards the try line. And Quail and Doris decides to pick and go from the back, but the advantage is still there. And Luke McGrath is going to look towards the left and puts it out into the hands of Reese Ruddock, just onto the pitch. 17 carries in last week's win against Leon at the RDS. Lidge back towards the left again. This time it's Tyke Furlong, still five meters out, centre of the pitch. Treviso lying in over the top, but Tabaldi decides to, to get his hands out of there. And again they go with Ruddock once again. Ryan's offside too. Out towards the left. Second penalty coming for Leinster. Faiva, the man judged to be offside this time round. McGrath brings it out to the right. Into the hands of Ringrose. And Ringrose with a huge skip pass out onto the wing to Dave Kearney. And Robbie Henshaw getting towards the try line. Can he get there? No, he stopped well two, two, uh, two feet out. McGrath flicks one out the back door towards Quail and Doris. And he gets over the line and manages to reach over. And finally, after 59 minutes of grueling rugby, Leinster have their opening try of this game. And finally for them, a little bit of daylight between the sides. The advantage coming off the, t off the scrum and working their way out towards the right. The skip pass from Gary Ringrose towards the hands of Dave Kearney. Played it back inside. And it's Quaylen Doris who manages to get over to mm -hmm. score the try. Really nice Leinster bit of lead by 11 points. Really nice bit of skill there, Luke McGrath. That ball uh, when it came back into Henshaw uh, wasn't the easiest to deal with. Flicks a, a, a mm. reverse pass out uh, and then sends uh, Doris really good, uh, uh, really good feet close quarters. Uh, runs a, an inside line, then steps back out off his right foot, and <coughs> really good power assisted by Furlong to push him over there towards the net. Really good play, sustained period of pressure, and they brought that killer instinct into the second half. Really, really good play. So right on the hour mark, it's Leinster who lead here, 
by 11 points to nil. Last week it was Max Deegan who stole the show. This week Quail and Doris managing to do it. And a difficult conversion for Ross Byrne in these conditions as well. The rain has stopped. But it's still quite soft underfoot. He's around 10 metres, 10, 15 metres in from this near touchline. And around 30 metres out. And it's Byrne and he just pulls it ever so slightly to the left and it's gone to the left and wide of the post. An hour gone, it remains Leinster 11, Benetton nil, but finally Johnny, the breakthrough for Leinster. Yeah, and I, I think they probably... You know they've they've had a really good foothold in this half compared to the last. Uh, in contrast to the last half, um, they've been very smart with their kicking game, utilising the space in, in, in the backfield, and then their offensive sets have have led to every time Treviso have have carried into them, they've nearly turned the ball over. Leinster have turned the ball over, but it's not been from a knock on or anything. It's been from Leinster's pressure getting in over the ball or counter rooking and then moving it from that rook. And that little. Lovely little slip pass from Luke McGrath was his last action of the game to be replaced by Jameson Gibson Park. Gibson Park has played in all but one game so far this season, has been very active. He was of course called into Andy Farrell's stock take before Christmas. Didn't quite make the final cut in the Irish squad, but is Irish qualified as of this season. And Leinster now with an hour gone. We just hope to see this out and guarantee their place as the number one seed heading into the knockout stage. And Josh van der Fleer getting in over there, and that's a brilliant turnover from van der Fleer. Penalty Leinster, his sixth turnover uh, the in the competition so far. Defence is re uh, relentless. Off that kickoff, Treviso went short. They won the ball just on the 10. Three phases later, they're getting turned over halfway between the 10 and uh, their ha and the halfway line. So Leinster are, are, are dominating the, the gain line in defence, but they're also creating opportunities for the likes of Doris. Here in this instant, Vlander Flyer getting over the ball. You just see the energy from someone like Tyg Furlong with the experience he has coming on and, uh, and, and uh, giving that energy that, uh, to the whole team. Really, really, really good play. You can almost see it in the eyes of Vander Fleer as we're watching the replay there, just knowing the exact moment, waiting in a rock, waiting in a rock, and then all of a sudden, this one's the right one, and straight in on top of it, hands all over it. Really, really good play from the back row. All over it like a vice, and you're not going to stop them. That penalty kicked down towards the 22 on this near touch line, and Cronin finds Ruddock, and they set up a short little mall before Cronin breaks, or James Tracy, sorry, breaks again. Tracy on for Cronin a few minutes ago. Ryan is offside. Penalty advantage coming for Leinster. Benetton offside as Reese Ruddock makes a short carry in Gibson Park now in possession for the first time. Puts it out to Ross Byrne, who with the advantage sends a kick out in the direction of James Lowe. But that's a really good take from Angelo Esposito out on the right wing for Benetton to prevent James Lowe from getting over for the try. But we are going to come all the way back to the, to the near side of the pitch. Penalty Leinster. And really starting to turn the screw. Esposito does really well there, he, under good pressure from James Lowe. Um, but again, just just the pressure is get, getting a bit much for Treviso. They, they just uh, squeak offside here, and no longer now they have the their their score is greater than seven points going for uh, going for the corner. Interesting enough, James Tracy might have broken off a, a slight earlier on the last uh, mall. It was going forward. Uh, he breaks off to the right, got, got slightly isolated and just turned again. They've got to an eight-man line out here with Robbie Henshaw in at the back. Looks like he's a, a back lifter. See where they go from here. Quaylen Doris straight up a two and James Tracy gets it back towards the back of that mall. Robbie Henshaw in there as well, just in front of him. Gibson Park directing the traffic, telling Tracy when to go where he wants it as they get up towards this try line. And it's a combination of Tracy and Gibson Park that have dived over the line. And it is a try for Leinster, whichever one of them got the, the final touchdown it look, on it. Looks like James Tracy. Uh, really good line out there. Obviously, uh, they brought Henshaw into it. So the uh, uh, obviously, a plea pram move. But really patient. They got the shove on, slowly going forward. Treviso then managed to shift it towards a touchline. And then they just splinter off then the, uh, back towards the posts. Uh, and really good executing. They, they have their, the, the, the killer instinct in this half. And uh, you won't be surprised to, to, 
to see them really, really turn the schooner in the last 15 minutes here. Yeah, very, very well worked mall. James Tracy had it the whole way at the back and Gibson Thank Park you, was alongside him, ready to use it. Tracy is the one that's been awarded the try, got the final touchdown. And Leinster leads 16-0 with this conversion to come from Ross Byrne. James Tracy, who's had a very active season. He's played in all but two games so far this campaign. Recently passed his 100 mark, his 100 appearance mark for the province as well. Meanwhile, over in France, a Dan Bigger penalty with 62 minutes played has brought that game to a two-point match. Leon still lead Northampton by 17 points to 15 with 16 minutes left to play. Munster fans will be hoping that Leon can hold on and win that game. But no, there has, just as I'm talking, Cobus Reinach has gone over for a Northampton try. 22-17 they lead now against Leon. Monster fans are going to be watching, if that stays as it is, they are going to be watching Northampton, or they're going to be watching Glasgow against Sale at the AJ Bell Stadium tonight, very nervously. Meanwhile, here at Stadio de Minigo, Ross Byrne out of that conversion, and it's 18-0 to Leinster with 14, 13 minutes left to play. And a change for Benetton as Alberto Scabri comes on in place of Erna Herbst who had been yellow carded earlier in this half and the kickoff for me and Keithley deep down in the direction of Robbie Henshaw he just safely kicks it straight out into touch not too much distance we're bringing possession up towards the 10 metre line rain starting to come back down here now again so uh, conditions are very much deteriorating and not, not, not a game that not conditions that lend itself to be chasing the game in Trying to figure out the numbers in this line out. It's Thomas Baravel. Benetton Hooker gets ready for his first throw and he finds his man and swoops in around the back and takes the carry up. But doesn't gain too many yards off it. Pettinelli now with a short burst. Stopped in midfield. On the ball. Benetton. 13, 14 metres inside this Leinster half of the pitch. 15 metres in from the near touchline. Tabaldi now. Out towards Nicola Quaglio. He's had to put in a long shift this afternoon, an early first half substitute. In place of Federico Zani, who had previously played every game in the competition this season. Rizzi now. For the first time in quite some time. Benetton getting to go through a few phases. There's been another score over in France, I should add. We've had uh, another 22-19 uh, is what I'm seeing there, although I'll, we'll just cut double check on that scoreline. Had been 22-17, so I'm not sure where the yeah, where, where 19 is coming from. <laughs> yeah, must be 22-20. Again, the Leinster defence has set really, really good there. Unfortunately, kind of one of those ones where Josh van der Flor is reloading back to his feet and the the nine, uh, Tavold goes to a kick, a box kick. It's one of those ones where you're like, oh, don't touch it, don't touch it. But you end up, you, you, you just, uh, temptation just get, get too, uh, too much for him and gives away a penalty. But their defensive sets have been incredible in this half and just uh, you know after four or five phases you can just see the frustration on the Jafrizo players because they're just repeatedly going backwards and backwards and backwards okay. so Benetton kicking that penalty stand right down into the Leinster 22 stand off, stand off, stand off, stand off. 10 minutes 10, left to play 10. and Ross Byrne is called ashore Kieran Frawley coming on now for his third European game Johnny Sexton's injury back in Northampton on the 7th of December has meant that Kieran Frawley now is getting plenty of game time over the last over the last period. And Leinster have defended that well and dragged Benetton towards the touchline, but they managed to stay in. Ross Maloney also was on the pitch for Leinster now in place of Devin Toner. But Benetton still, Benetton still have. Baravale. Tibali now to Sheriff Traore, who's knocked back in the tackle brilliantly. Benetton out towards the 22 now. And again, that's a huge drive up from Dave Carney. 
and Benetton going 10, 15 metres backward, 15 metre backwards in these last two phases. 30 metres out from the Leinster try line now. Like this phase, of the pitch. This phase started five metres out from the Leinster line. It's now 10 yards, it's now five metres from there, uh, from the Leinster 10 metre. Incredible defensive set. And I think in this game, Johnny, I think of Leinster kind of shown that when it hasn't been early tries, killing games off early, that they're more than comfortable soaking up a bit of pressure. And Just soaking up the pressure. With, yeah, soaking with, you up have the pressure, the dealing with the, uh, dealing with it, and then just repeated efforts. Just never getting sick of defending. Again, they just have the, the discipline now is important here in terms of they were after giving away two two silly enough penalties in terms of Van der Fleer and uh, and James Ryan there trying to play uh, trying to play the nine, but you know uh, and they don't need to do those because uh, Treviso are running out of ideas and they're running out of options. Is the penalty count something that might frustrate Leinster a bit this season? Because looking back through it, it is one consistent thing game think, on game in this competition. They're averaging more than yeah. 10 penalties conceded yeah. per match. I, I, I think so. You know, if, if they had to get those, uh, you know, you know that penalty. And that's something that they are really going to have to uh, have to do uh, when, when they get to the knockout stages in, in all competitions. And especially with their internationals away now over the next uh, eight to ten weeks. Okay. It's really important that's led from within and they get that penalty count down. But really, really important is when you come to knockout rugby that your discipline doesn't give the opposition opportunities just to build the scoreboard. And that's, uh, you know, I think that's very, very important. That's probably their main, main work on. Well, back and forth stuff over in France. I can actually confirm the scoreline at the moment is now Leon 24, Northampton 22. It was the try for Northampton that had been given. Charlie Natai manages to get over. And Jonathan Wisniewski converting. So with 10 minutes to go in that game, it's just about going in favour of, of the Munster fans. 24 points to 22. James Ryan does well there, gets up at two, uh, makes up for uh, giving away the penalty, turn the ball, uh, and turns the ball over. So Leinster holding possession here. Just inside their own 22 at the moment. As Gibson Park just darts out, creates a bit of space and kicks it towards the touchline and sends it straight out. to good uh, inside his own 22, yeah, so that, get, gets the metres. That's a really good kick, to be fair. Trying to box kick from uh, <laughs> from in behind your... Uh, from in the middle of the park in your own 22 is a difficult one. Um, probably need your 10. You need Foley standing up there trying to look to, to exit off 10 and not, and not 9 in that position. But a great kick by uh, Gibson Park. Brings play to the 10-metre line. White, come up. Blue, come up, come up. Benetton line out now. Ball! Taken by Lazzaroni. Maurice Ruddock tried to get in under that, but couldn't stop it. Once. Blue five. Benetton told to use it. But they are gaining a few yards here, although this is getting messy, and James Ryan dived in from the side, and it looks like it might be a penalty advantage coming for Benetton. Tibaldi springs it out into the hands of Benvenuti. Or Antonio Rizzi on Montiuana now, and Tabaldi goes left, goes right. And manages to put it into the hands of, of Rizzi. Luca Morisi now out to Montiuana. And good hands from Angelo Esposito. Looked like it had slipped away, but he manages to just grasp on and hold on. And that's a huge tackle from Reese Ruddock. But Pedinelli has done well to just get the ball backwards and present it for Tabaldi. Tabaldi is Keatley out to his left. No advantage, go back. No advantage coming though. We are going to come all the way back for that penalty. Five side entry. Yeah, just a discipline letting down. And, Five. You know, when there's no need, they they managed slow. to stop them all. Uh, there, there wasn't a whole lot, a whole lot for them to go on, and then they just give away a silly penalty coming in the side. Just in front of us, Luke McGrath. Uh, 
comes up on our, our screens here in front of us. Luke McGrath give a man of the match. I think well, uh, 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 well deserved. He was pivotal in the first half in terms of getting Lencher in the right areas off his breaks around the uh, around the mall and rook area. And I think his box kicking was exemplary today. He was giving Dave Carney and James Lowe really good opportunity to get up and contest. Really, really good performance, which will do. Um, you know, I know the nines is a very um, very hot topic at the moment in Ireland, but certainly um, puts himself. Uh, you know, won't do his his. Uh, his credentials any harm today after a performance like that. Ball. Taken by Marco Lazzaroni in the lineups. Benetton edging their way up towards the 22 now. Finger tries to get in over it. Kieran Frawley had made the tackle. Oh, but it's spilled poorly in the tackle by Eli Snyman. And it's going to be a Leinster scrum just inside this 22. And I think after what had been a very very competitive game for a large part that kind of just has the sting has been lost out of it ever since that, that Leinster try. Yeah, I think uh, and I think Leinster, just in the conditions uh, Leinster have been happy enough just to kind of soak up the pressure and defend and repeatedly win, you know, they, they've they repeatedly won the gain line all day from their defensive sets uh, and with conditions like this it's been very very hard to, to, to chase the game for uh, for Treviso um, and I think Leinster's D has just kind of swarmed uh, swarmed all over Benetton and they haven't really had any answers might have been different if they'd gone when Leinster were really showing serious discipline in the first 10-15 minutes if if it had been a case that they gone three, six, nine, uh, that might have had potentially changed the complexion of the game. But okay. in terms of um, in terms of the outcome, I think it's just been uh, Leinster's uh, Leinster's D that has just really, really pushed them forward. Roller coaster of emotions for Munster fans over the next day or so. There's been another try over in France. Northampton Saints back in front. George Furbank has gone over with eight minutes to go. They now lead Leon by 29 points to 24. And get a bonus point. And get a bonus point. But if Leon were to come back and win, then even with two losing bonus points, it still wouldn't be a disaster for Munster. A bonus point win for them tomorrow would more than likely put them ahead of Northampton via points scored. Uh, two points today for, Le for Northampton would bring them up to 29. The difficulty, though, is if Leon were to score a try, level it up at 29. Three points for Northampton. That would take Munster out of the reckoning in terms of Northampton tomorrow. So uh, still a few minutes to go there, but a penalty. Leinster coming off the back of that scrum as Gibson Park decides to break. But no advantage coming. Gibson Park spilling the ball. It's going to be a penalty for Leinster on this 22. I want to give you the opportunity to see... So three minutes to go here, Johnny. We've spoken about different aspects number eight I suppose another person who's probably in focus a little bit more at the moment is Ross Byrne Jonathan Sexton's fitness had been in question it looks now like he probably is going to be available for the Six Nations but with Ross Byrne having missed out in a World Cup, uh, World Cup squad at the moment, is he looking like your, your second choice Why behind Johnny Sexton in Ireland? Yeah, I think so. I, I think he's played very well. Uh, he came back, he was obviously dealt with the disappointment of missing out. Um, and he's been, you know, one of the, the linchpins in, in terms of Leinster's performances for the whole season. He's got a lot of game time underneath his belt and he's... Um, 17, 17. He's growing every game. He was very controlled today. Uh, it was, a, you know, it's been a been a, been a mucky kind of dirty day so he, he controlled it and his kicking game was was good bar one one kick that you'd probably be, that he would be dis, disappointed with that went out on the fall Jesus. but outside of that he, he, he had a very uh, controlled uh, well managed game today which is important in conditions like this almost a lovely move coming off for Leinster, Leinster there James Tracy went to Ross Maloney no lift in the line out Maloney just straight back into the hands of Tracy and just tried the offload but it just didn't quite come out it's one thing I've noticed over the last year or two Johnny uh, and I know given your coaching background you might uh, be able to tell us how much this is coming back in no lift in the line out 
is yeah. definitely something on the professional level anyway. I, I am certainly seeing a lot more. I reckon I'm seeing it one, maybe two times a game. Yeah, well, I think I, I think it's based uh, specifically around uh, a, mall, uh, a mall opportunity probably in the 22 where you can get the ball in quick and they're expecting you to go up. Uh, and they might have the opportunity to, to to contest, but there that was just the the lifting pod was was moving back, and then Maloney popped into that space as uh, on a four man line out that that's been left by the by the lifting pod. So it is certain everyone's trying to get an edge somewhere kind of around chick plays or or the opportunity to to get easy line out ball because line out is such a, a specialist area and you can spend hours hours looking at it that trying to get easy ball uh, for you to maul off it, it is. Re and launch off is really really important so just heading into the last minute here at Stadio Domenico and Leinster make a little bit of a mess of that James Tracy's line that went into the hands of Coyle and Doris but just a knock on in the transformation from Doris back to James Tracy and it's going to be a scrum Benetton knock on from Tracy in the end it was so with 30 seconds to go, Benetton will have uh, possession here and it looks now as if Northampton have killed things off over in Leon. They have their fifth try, it's now 34 points to 24 with two and a bit minutes to go. So Munster fans, you can scratch this game off because at half past five, you're going to have your eyes on the AJ Bell Stadium where the Glasgow Warriors are taking on sale sharks Set. and in that game you are going to want a sale win or if glasgow win you are not going to want them to get a bonus point if they get a bonus point that means no matter what happens monster cannot get through to the quarterfinals of this competition four points or less for glasgow though and you will still be alive when we kick off tomorrow afternoon at Coleman park between monster and the ospreys one final chance for Leinster to attack here. The clock is in the red on 80 minutes as Keane Neely has possession. After a Benetton knock-on and they go towards the far touchline now. James Lowe in possession. And Gibson Park has Doris inside him. And Doris gets inside the 10-metre line out to Ruddock. Ruddock with van der Fleer in support and Gibson Park again goes to the right into the hands of Robbie Henshaw who decides enough is enough. He's sick of the rain. And the full-time whistle blows, and Leinster are heading through to the quarterfinals, a home quarterfinal, and if they win that, a home semi-final. Their destiny's in their own hands, and Johnny Murphy, they've been comfortable in the second half? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, the conditions uh, weren't weren't great. It wasn't the, the most... Uh, it wasn't the best, one of the best games in the world, but you know the defence, uh, their defence stood strong. I think the biggest work on that they, they probably have is, is probably their defence. Uh, a couple of needless penalties there by you know experienced players in in Van der Fleer and Ryan, uh, but in terms of of Leinster and, and where they wanted to get to, job done, top seed, home semi final. It's completely in their, uh, uh, completely in their hands going forward. So it's finished here at Stadio Domingo. Leinster 18, Benetton Treviso nil tries for Quaylen Doris and James Tracy in the second half with Ross Byrne adding a conversion and two penalties. We'll be back for more rugby tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock on Off the Ball where Munster will be taking on the Ospreys. Will they have a chance to get through to the quarterfinals? We'll find out tonight. We'll find out later on this evening when the Sale Sharks take on the Glasgow Warriors. But until then, until Thoma Park tomorrow afternoon where it's finished, Leinster 18, Benetton Treviso nil. The Stadio Manigo. Back to John Duggan in the studio. Thanks, Neil and Johnny. Well, a good win for Leinster today. Ulster playing Bath in Belfast at 3.15. Remember, our rugby coverage brought to you by Vodafone. Team of us, everyone in. Now it's ended. Goal is at Vicarage Road. Watford nil. Tottenham Hotspur nil. Uh, Paolo Gazaniga saving a Troy Deeney penalty in the second half. And Spurs also having a ball cleared off the line. A goalless draw in Vicarage Road and we've actually got some Jose Mourinho audio now here. We he can hear him, the Portuguese, speaking to BT. In the second half, I think the game was more 50-50, uh, 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 not as much dominant we were in the in the first half. And then um, we tried, we tried with the with the ammunition we have. Uh, we tried in the last period to bring um, energy, to bring uh, more depth from midfield with Jetson, with um, more vision, more quality from uh, from Ericsson. And as as you as you told, um, we were two millimeters from 
from winning the match. But I think overall, I think was was a good match. Just to be clear on the decisions that you're unhappy with, Kapu's high tackle on Tanganga and then the follow-up yellow card. Is, I know you don't there want to comment. Various, there are various decisions, but I I leave for you. I leave for the pundits. I leave for the the referees, um, specialists to do. I prefer not to not to speak more than than, than what I did. Gazaniga, of course, made the penalty save. He stepped up very well in, in Loris's absence, hasn't he? 